الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم One of the previous speakers he spoke about the suffering and the injustice of the native Indians of the native Indians, the native Americans of a people who were pushed out and killed many cases abused, raped, sometimes tortured for the sake of another people to take over their land and there is in fact a poem a poem from one of the Cherokees and the poem goes like this it said that I tracked the trail that my forefathers walked saturated by their tears their trail has become my trial and I listen with their ears I cry the tears of the Cherokee proud of the salty tears I cry the tears of the Cherokee proud of the salty tears and this trial the trial of the Cherokee is something I remember every year there is something you will find in the history of the native Indians of the native Indians, Americans a sense of collective memory a sense of remembrance and as we gather here today on this ninth anniversary of the kidnapping and the torture and the imprisonment of our sister Afya Siddiqui we think about that we think about the relevance here of a collective memory you see there are some people in the world who are remembered there are some people in the world in the words of Susan Sontag, of people who, are, who see the world like you and I and then there are other people who are to be seen by the world there are some people who are humanized and then there are others who are dehumanized there are some people who are personalized and some people who are depersonalized there are some people who are remembered and there are some people who are reminded to be forgotten and it's our sister Afya Sadiqi that in some respects represents an inversion and she represents an inversion with this respect that in the western world you will find that western citizens are often times defined by way of their exclusive attributes by way of their individuality by way of their exclusive uniqueness that those of the east and particularly the muslims are defined in metaphoric terms are defined in metaphoric terms that simply emphasizes their indistinguishability and the narrative of the western media discourse is what? it's to represent us as a collective mass and not through singularity but what makes this event as it's continuing every year alhamdulillah what makes it so unique is in some respect it kind of represents a reverse of that inversion it's not about the mass it's about the singularity of a single muslim woman called Afya Sadiqi but what makes all of that even more important is that that single muslim woman Afya Sadiqi represents the whole of the ummah that in the by way of the singular we understand the whole and why shouldn't it be like that bearing in mind our Prophet said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-muslimoon ka jasadin wahid that the Muslims are like one body إذا اشتكى من عضو تداع له سائر الجسد بالسهر والحمة أو كما قال sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the Muslims are like one body and don't see that as some kind of a cliched statement that is the word of your Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that is the words of your Prophet that the Muslim is like one body and if one part in the singular, if one part of that body is in pain then the rest of the, of the whole body, the mass if we find the disturbance in the singularity 
then we find this thing, a disturbance in the mass. If there is a disturbance in the one, there is a disturbance in the whole. If there is a pain in the singularity, there is a pain in the mass. Our Prophet said, if there is, if there is pain in one part of that body, then the rest of the body experiences fever and sleeplessness. If we wake up in the morning and we sleep in the evening, and we do not feel that pain, and we do not remember the Muslimin who are suffering in Sham in Syria, and our sister Afia, and our brother Shakir Ahmad, and the Muslimin in Iraq and Afghanistan and Palestine and Kashmir and wherever they are suffering, if we are not remembering them, then we have a problem with our Iman. It is not simply apathy, that is a, that is a weakness of your faith. That is a problem in your Iman. If Allah will ask us all on the Day of Judgment, مَرَضْتُ فَلَمْ تَعُدْنِي I was ill and you did not visit me. And the servant will say, and how could I visit you when you are the Lord of the worlds? And Allah will say, did you not know that my servant such and such was ill and you did not visit him? And did you not know that had you visited him, you would have found me with him? Meaning found the reward, found my reward with him. If Allah will ask this for the man who, who was ill, but was not visited, for the man who was hungry, but was not fed, then how about the woman who was raped? Then how about the woman who was tortured? Then how about the woman whose children were snatched from her? And how about the woman who was sentenced for a crime she did not commit, she could not commit for 86 years? There are some people in this world who are humanized and then there are others who are dehumanized. And what tends to happen is that there is a framework and what that framework figures is this is that the East is the inverse of the West. Yes. It figures the East has the inverse of the West. So what happens is that we tend to be the barbaric of their civility or their civil. We represent the, the medieval of their modern. We come to represent the superstitious of the irrational. And this is all done often times to dehumanize us. So we don't have the same word. I remember for the killing in Iraq, the General Tommy Franks from this administration, represented by the embassy just behind us, once, when he was questioned about the Muslims, Iraqi civilians slaughtered, massacred by American bombs in Iraq, he said, we don't do a body count. I remember when Colin Powell was asked a similar, similar question, and he said, it's not a number that I'm interested in. But perhaps had those people been Christians, or had they been white in complexion, or had they spoken English? Then perhaps it wouldn't have been the same thing. You see, it's very easy to imprison a woman for 86 years and then not expect a huge public outcry. But then in other cases where some people are in prison, there is a very huge outcry, public outcry. Because, let's just face it, there are some people in the world who have the worth and some people who are denied it. Some people who are represented, some people who are not represented. But it's by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that at least we are here today to represent our sister Afya Sadiqi. That on the day of judgment, we can say to Allah that I was there on that day speaking or listening or participating or campaigning on behalf of my sister Alfie Siddiqui. You know there are times in human history where some people are maligned, are victimized, are abused, are scorned, are chided. There are some people, there are some times in human history 
We might remember the case of Sophie Skoll. A brother before me mentioned the case of the Nazis and how they victimized the Jews and how they killed the gypsies and how they killed the mentally handicapped and everyone else was numb. Everyone else was desensitized. Everyone else just simply carried on with it. Either they participated in that injustice or they became bystanders. They simply said to themselves, well, I know it's bad, but I can't do anything against it. I can't speak about it. I'm sure there are policemen here and there are representatives perhaps in the American government who might even actually feel within themselves that there is something going wrong with the way things are going with our government. And although we proclaim this, these superlative calls of justice and everything like that, we know it doesn't match. It's not like that. It's far off the mark. And you found this in the time of the Nazis. And so they would kill the Jews and they would kill the gypsies and they would kill the mentally handicapped and they would kill the children who were born ill. And everyone went along with that. Normal Germans went along with that. Either they were silent or they participated in that. But here you find the woman called Sophie Skoll who was part of a resistance movement called the White Rose. And herself, together with her brother Hans Skoll, another one, Willie Graf, Christopher Probst, and other people, few of them, in the darkness of the night, they would offer leaflets. That's what they would do within capacity and capability. No one is saying that we have to try and do the impossible for our sister Afia Siddiqui, although everything is possible with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But all they would do is simply write leaflets, and they would post them around in the darkness of the night, until they were caught in Munich University and she was executed at the age of 21, if I remember. A woman who defied Hitler at the age of 21. There are now more than 190 schools in Germany named in her memory. A woman who was once reviled, a woman who was once seen and regarded as a traitor and treacherous to her own government, had the human capacity and the will and the determination and the common decency and sense to break away from the status quo and to defend the cause of justice. More than 190 schools in Germany are named in the memory of Sophie Skoll. Her own school called Ulm Gymnasium is now called Hans and Sophie Skoll Gymnasium. And the motto of that school is we will never stand for injustice. The motto of that school is we will never stand for injustice. These are normal human beings. They're not even Muslims. But they're more decent than the people you see around us who are simply bystanders. They know something is wrong. But they're so desensitized, they have no human willpower to try and say something, do something. When I come here, sometimes I remember Brian Hoare. He wasn't a Muslim. But you have to at least applaud the spirit of resistance and courage within him by degree of capability of a man who camped outside the Parliament Square for 10 years. For what? Because he knew the bombs these people are dropping in Iraq are killing innocent people that they're invading and occupying another people's land. And how many cases have there been of torture, and of rape, and of killing, and of killing of children, and rape of women? How many cases have there been like that? And he felt so disturbed and annoyed by that, he decided to camp outside Parliament Square in protest. And he's passed away, but he did that. Just last, or a few weeks ago, was the anniversary of the killing of Rachel Corey, the American girl, right? She could have been like everybody else, but she traveled from America to Palestine to defend the home of Muslims whose homes are destroyed by the Israelis. 
and she did that and she paid for it with her life all of these examples represent a degree of courage and bravery and breaking away from the status quo and not being indifferent to the suffering of others and that is what we always have to remember and so I began with that poem of the Cherokee that I will sing that I will cry the tears of the Cherokee he said even after all these years even after all these years so do not let therefore the past passing of time desensitize us that we've done it one year, second year, third year, well that we will continue to remember and pray and campaign and petition and fight and work and have this courage and spirit of resistance within us our Prophet said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and by the way he was the one just like Jesus just like Jesus for a Christian that for a country that claims to be a Christian country or at least have some Christian ethos somewhere they make the assertion Jesus was the one who was with those on the fringes of human society was he not he was the one who was with those on the edge and the fringes of human society all the prophets were like that they were not with those who were the celebrities like celebrity culture in our world today our prophet was with those who are on the fringes of human society and he taught all of us whoever alleviates the grief of a Muslim in this life Allah will alleviate his need in the next life his grief in the next life whoever alleviates the need of a needy person in this life Allah would alleviate his need in the next life and that hadith continues Wallahu fi awni al-abd ma kan al-abdu fi awni ahi Allah will always support his servant as long as that servant is supporting his brother or his sister and so just to reiterate therefore we do not pity our sister Afia because she is the one who is being tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that is her maqam, that is her station, that is what Allah wants from her Allah wants her to be by his mercy in the highest part of paradise but Allah is also testing us because we have the trappings of the dunya and the world around us that is dissuading us from assisting that is dissuading us from spending in the cause of Allah that is dissuading us from waking and praying that is dissuading us from making the effort and striving in the cause of justice and that is the Islamic paradigm we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make your sincerity to make our sincerity by his mercy the means of the deliverance of our sister Afya Sadiqi the means of the deliverance of, of our sister Afya Sadiqi and Allah is capable of doing anything and everything and the means of the deliverance of all the Muslimin who are suffering and who are in prison may Allah give them sabr, patience and resolve and thabat and istiqamah and may Allah grant us the same and may Allah grant us more enthusiasm and more spirit and resolve of working harder for this cause and may Allah send his peace and blessings upon Muhammad وسلم, and upon Jesus, upon Isa and upon all of his prophets Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen